Stand by, everybody. Yeah. Charlie, you haven't got your hammer, mate. Where's your hammer? Somebody find him his bleeding hammer. Yeah. Okay. And action. <laughs> I've just settled into my usual seat in Greg's, one of the stalls by the window that overlooks Fitzroy Street. My habit to pop in here as a part of my daily walk. Their flat whites are reasonably priced and yet one of their jam donuts is a secret indulgence I've been addicted to for some time. About to take my first sip of coffee, I had a cup halfway to my mouth when I overheard the woman seated next to me say to her companion, to be quite honest, Freddy, I'm scared every time I approach my own front door. And just to be on the safe side, the rubber gloves I use for washing up these days I keep in my handbag. Hearing this, I was as baffled and intrigued as the man to whom she was speaking. He asked, Really? Why is that? Obviously, so that I'd never have to touch the door handle. Sipping my coffee, I listened while Reggie voiced his concern. But Rosemary, aren't you overreacting slightly? I don't think so. I know for a fact there are people in the city that won't be dead. Oh, for God's sake. My deputy, for one. He's been seated with resentment ever since I picked him at the post for head of department. And with a name like Ivan Bondoslavsky, you can't be too careful. As she continued, I was reflecting how relatively humdrum my own life was by comparison. Especially so when she said, My suspicions were really confirmed when I learnt the location of the house he'd just bought for his mother. Where? A little wee village called Arlington? I've never heard of it. Lowering her voice to the merest whisper, she said, Five minutes up the road from Pot and Down. So? But visiting his mother is plainly just a cover. But for what? But can you not guess? The manufacture of a nerve agent like Novachok? By this time I was asking myself, can this get any better? The answer was, yes it could. But Rosemary, all this could be pure coincidence. Not when I tell you what happened yesterday morning. If conclusive proof were needed, that was the absolute clincher. Really? What? Unfortunately, before the woman could reply, an accident occurred which cut short any further revelations. I don't know how familiar you are with the jam donut, but when eating one, they should be handled with care. Now, the safest way is to locate the hole where the baker has inserted the jam and bite directly into that. So completely captivated was I by what I was hearing, I failed to do this. The woman, obviously savouring the suspense of what she was about to reveal, had just reached for her coffee cup and my raspberry jam squirted right across the back of her hand. Her reaction was extraordinary, though after what I'd heard, not entirely unexpected. Transfixed by the sight of her jam-covered hand, she rose like an automaton. Her open mouth made the shapes of speech, but no sounds came forth. With her free hand, she reached out blindly for her companion and clutched him across the chest. By this time, I too was on my feet. Thinking that a jocular approach was probably best, I said, These jam donuts have a life of their own. And then added as an afterthought, They should come with a government health warning. In the circumstances, this was probably not the cleverest thing to say. In response, the woman gave me a look of withering scorn before pulling her friend towards her and screaming at him, Get me an ambulance! 
trying to inject a note of sanity into an increasingly volatile situation, Reggie said, Raspberry, it's raspberry fucking jam, for God's sake. How did you know that? Because I saw it squirt out of his jam donut. By this time, however, Rosemary was in the street and running, <laughs> presumably in the direction of Adam Brooks and E. With a quick apology to me, Reggie grabbed her handbag and ran out after her. I returned to my seat and consumed the rest of my contaminated doughnut, savouring as I did so my new role, that of a high-ranking colonel in the KGB's Cambridge station.